I want to put it like real high, like on the ceiling, so I look real good. God, and I am. It's great. <laughs> um, so I hope this looks better than what the last video was, because the lighting was really bad. Anyway, all right. So hello, internet. So I'm here today with Mia, and I'm here today. Um, you guys are actually getting a special sneak peek because usually I wouldn't even show her on camera until she was finished. But, um, we got yet another blizzard today. It started last night, and that's really annoying because it is officially spring. I've kind of just been, like, um, sitting here chilling out with Mia all day, like, watching YouTube videos. And, uh, I, it's just, it really is demoralizing at one point because it's just, we've had so many blizzards. It's just a bummer. But enough complaining. I feel like Mia is the kind of person who would say that there's no such thing as bad weather. There's only bad clothing and would tell me to suck it up. So that's why she's here to tell me to get over it. And uh, yeah, I would not normally have her all together like this and on camera like this. She's not finished. Um, she's my Hujo body. That's just how I'm going to. I don't even care. Um, body with a with my doll zone head so yes it is an ABS body with a resin head my apathy to that is very high I do not care that it's a ABS body with a resin head um, and I've just kind of been like cuddling her all day just kind of like this because I'm just like so I thought I would do something kind of a little different today because honestly I just need something to cheer me up because I'm really feeling not so cheery. But yeah, this is Mia, uh, pre-face up. I'll be doing her face up as soon as I get the chance to, pretty much. Uh, but I thought I would do a different video today. I thought I would do a tag video, which I don't usually do. So I decided to do this, uh, Never Have I Ever Tagged by Nerdy Doll Girl. I'll link her videos down below so you guys can check those out. So I thought, why not do it? Uh, never have I ever bought a doll that I couldn't afford. So, um, funny story. Here, let me put Mia down. We're gonna get... Don't fall. Oh my god. Alright, so we gotta bring out Riley here. My Michaela. And, uh, funny story with her is that, um, I... She was, she was secondhand off of eBay, just like all of my dolls have been so far. And, except one. Uh, Mia was firsthand. Her head was... My doll's own head was firsthand. But anyway, and uh, with Michaela here, um, she popped up on eBay secondhand in beautiful tan resin, like I'd been pining for for forever. And what it is, is that the day that she popped up, I knew that I was going to get paid that night. I didn't technically have the money for her when I bought her. I just knew I was going to get paid that night. So I technically bought her before I actually had the money for her. But it was all good. I had the money later that afternoon. Because I was just like, you know what would depress me for two to six weeks really badly is if I see basically my Grail doll pop up on eBay for a very reasonable price and then I go to work and she sold while I was at work. That would have just devastated me. I decided to buy her before I went to work and it all worked out that day. So that's, that worked out, it worked out really well in the end. I, I have her and I, and I got paid, so I had money after then. It was all fine, it was all good. And then I also have Colette, my resin soul, yeah. Um, I did actually kind of do the same thing with her where she was like, if I remember correctly, she was like 130 plus shipping. And um, I spent like my last, like, I had like $200 left until my next payday. She was another one that was like, well, I know I'm getting paid soon, so why don't you just go for it? And so, uh, I mean, I got paid like the night after I bought her, but I was kind of really low on funds for a few days when I got her too. So, you know, I mean, it all worked out in the end. It's, it's all good. <laughs> Never have I ever, and I'm reading off a piece of paper. I printed the questions out, so that's what, uh, that's how I'm doing the thing, because I shoot on my phone. Never have I ever gotten inspired to buy a doll and copy someone else's style. Star. Star. Try again. Gotten inspired to buy a doll and copy someone else's style after seeing what they did with that doll. 
Um, and the answer to that is just no. Um, I haven't done that. Um, in general, I actually try to find inspiration for my dolls outside of actual doll customizing if I can so help it. Usually I just follow whatever wild things come out of my wild brain and um, I don't ever like look at someone else's like like usually if I see someone else's doll that I like I go that's cool and all but how would I do it? I'm always like but how would I do that differently if I see something that I like? So that's how I approach stuff. Um, never have I ever put a doll on layaway. Uh, well, I guess the way this game works is that's true. That's a true statement. Um, I just bought all my dolls outright. Maybe I should have done a layaway or something, but uh, no, I just I just bought all of my dolls outright. It's just uh, I got really lucky with all these, and just when they popped up, I just pounced. Next question. Never have I ever cut any of my dolls' hair. Um, well, when it comes to Michaela, um, I did trim her bangs. I don't know if that counts. And then who else I also have here is Byron. I don't know if this technically counts, but I did make this wig. So there was a lot of hair cutting that happened in making his wig. Um, I did actually specifically cut his bangs too. So I don't know if that counts, but I'm going to count it for that question. Never have I ever done a repaint. Uh, well, all of my dolls are painted by me. So, um... Uh, I have done a lot of repaints. Uh, this entire channel is basically me doing repaints. So, yeah. Never have I ever bought a doll just because it was on sale. So, uh, yeah, I have done that because I have a Miro doll body that I was uh, working on earlier. I was re-sculpting her hips just earlier today. Um, because I'm stuck inside, I have been doing a lot of sculpting. And part of it has been working on my Miro doll body. And um, I bought this body simply because I was surfing the used BJD tag on eBay and it popped up and it was only 50 bucks and I bought it. <laughs> and um, so I ca came up with um, Josephine's whole character around that. So uh, it wound up being a good thing because um, this is my Dana head that I modded and she's very rough right now because she's still work in progress. Along with this, the Miro doll body is very rough, very, very work in progress. Cause what it is, is that Mia over here is, this is her, this is the body's original head. And um, you can see how much I've modded it based off of the head cap. And uh, because I found the Miro doll body, is the reason why I decided to buy Dolls on Noel for Mia because um, I wasn't I did, this face was not Mia's face this ma this face was Josephine's face and so I needed to find a head that fit Mia so uh, it wound up working out really well because um, I was feeling kind of lukewarm about this being Mia's character and then uh, Mira Doll Body came in and now that's a totally different character and Mia has a whole new head. So I'm really happy about that because I think that she's beautiful. Never have I ever wished I could trade my collection for someone else's collection. No. No. <laughs> it took me so long to get the dolls that I wanted to get. No. Um, maybe in the sense that before I had any dolls, I would easily trade no dolls for someone else's doll. But that wouldn't be fair. That'd be mean. So, um... No, that's like a nightmare scenario. That's like a nightmare. Like, you uh, uh, trade with someone else or you die. Never have I ever hated a doll company purely on the look of their dolls. So, my answer is going to piss a lot of people off, honestly, because Fairyland, every single time I see a Chloe, I hate her nose. I, I don't like the way her nose is sculpted on her face. Every single time I see that doll, I just want to take a slab of Milliput and put it right in the middle of her face. I can't stand that thing. And to me, I'm one of those people, all Fairyland sculpts look so similar to me that they're all Chloe. They've all become Chloe. I don't like her nose. I don't like her mouth. Um, there's something about the way that her mouth is so like lip injection-y that I don't like how her lips look. I don't like how her nose look. And and then they're also everywhere. And her and me the beer. Oh, thank you. I have a beer now. Uh, I have been visited by the fairy godmother of Not Your Father's Fruit Punch. 
it tastes like Hawaiian punch, so, um, or like a popsicle or something like that. So, um, I've been blessed by the beer fairy. <sighs> Thank the Lord. Okay. Uh, getting back to what I was saying. Yeah. Um, I don't like fairyland. Uh, moving on. <laughs> I was, I was, I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry, guys. Never have I ever been to a doll convention. No, I haven't been to a convention. I'm kind of a hermit, and I don't really like to be around humans too much, so I'd kind of have to be forced to go to a convention. Um, maybe bribe me with beer. I don't know. Um, with, with, well, this isn't really beer. It's really candy. It tastes just like freaking ice cream. Like, it's, it's pretty sugary. Never have I ever restrung a doll. I've restrung like all of my dolls. Um, this Hujo body has been restrung numerous times. Um, this was actually the first body I restrung because technically Dana was the first doll that I got. I'm gonna put this beer down. And um, yeah, she was the very, very first one that I got, um, which is kind of annoying because it's taken me so long to complete either of her looks, but um, we'll get to that eventually. But this was the first body I restrung because her previous owner strung her so tight that what she was doing is she was basically sitting like this permanently because she was strung so tightly. So I didn't want her to accidentally snap. I was like genuinely worried about her ABS cracking. So I had to restring her because I was like, there's no way I'm going to risk her cracking because she was tied that tightly. So, um, I sat out and I was like, okay, I am like mentally preparing myself. This might just take like an afternoon. Everyone tells me how hard restringing is. Um, I'm just like mentally prepared. Uh, I may have to stop and cry at a certain point in time. And then like I sat with a piece of string and just some elastic I bought and it was easy and it took me like 15, 20 minutes like tops. And I was just like, what now with Michaela here she was restrung for the opposite reason she was strung way too loose so um she was like so floppy when i got her she was like she couldn't really even sit up she was like that floppy so she had to be restrung because there was just no way i was able to position her at all with the way that she came um now when it comes to byron on the other hand uh byron Dal Chateau Douglas. Um, the only reason, reason why I restrung him, his stringing was fine. I was actually totally fine with it. I was actually kind of sad that I had to redo it. It's just that I wanted him to be a human character, so I had to take his extra joints out. Now, he is a pain to restring. Dal Chateau, what it is, is they have, like, very narrow... Like, they don't have a lot of room on the inside. Like, the tunnels for the, the elastic are, like, very narrow. And so he's just, like... Total pain. I tried to restring him on camera. The problem was that uh, I kept knocking the camera over because he was like such a pain. And I had to like replace uh, all the hooks in him too. Um, I replaced his old hooks with, with much smaller hooks to fit into the um, new armholes because when you're taking the extra joints out, they use kind of really long, kind of thicker hooks than what he has right now. So uh, no, I've done lots of restringing. So, um, it's just kind of a chore. I just view it as a chore that just sometimes has to get done. Um, and if you just kind of, you know, um, do some deep breathing beforehand and just be prepared to walk away from it if you have to, I think that helps a lot. And using ribbon, that, that tip really, really does help. It helps a lot to use ribbon. Never have I ever hid the fact that I collect dolls. Anyone who knows me knows that I collect dolls. I'm not quiet about the fact that I uh, deal with these guys at all. Every, everyone I know, all my friends know. Um, I don't really talk about it at work. I don't know if that counts, but I'm not friends with people at work. So, you know, um, um, actually a lot of my friends follow my art page. So I have cool friends. I'm very, I'm very, very lucky. I'm very lucky that way. Never have I ever talked to my dolls. Um, I talk to my dolls all the time. Again, I'm just on full blast all the time. Um, a lot of the ways I, like, bought their outfits is, like, I was like, hey, Colette, do you like these pants? Um, hey, Colette, do you think that shirt's gonna go with these pants? Uh, when it came to these necklaces, I asked everyone who wanted their necklaces, because I didn't know exactly. I just, I bought them before I knew who would get them. 
Colette latched onto them very quickly. With with their wigs, a lot of them, I was just sitting with the dolls in my lap going, what wig do you want? Do you like this wig? Do you like that wig? I talked to them all the time. And like with Byron, I remember being like, what glasses do you want? I think you wear black lenses. I think, or no, what are they called? Black frames. I was like, I think you wear some black frames. I think you wear some thick black frames. Uh, I remember being that like that specifically with him. And I remember... Um, looking at uh, different watches. I remember him just being like, no, I don't like them. I think they're all going to be too big and make my wrists look wimpy. And I don't want that. I want to look mankly. <laughs> I want to look like a mang. And um, so he wound up getting a moonstone necklace instead. Uh, and I think he really likes that necklace. And I think he thinks that it like protects him from evil or some kind of superstitious thing like that. Next question. Never have I ever lied about liking a friend's doll. Um, I'm kind of a hermit, and I don't really talk to a lot of people. Uh, I do lurk a lot, but most of the time, I just, I, I'm very introverted, and I don't like talking to people that much. Um, I'm the kind of person that would love to just, nothing more than to just, like, seal myself away in a room for a year, and then come out uh, stumbling and blinking in the bright sun and go, look what I made, and then go back into my cave for another six months to three years. Never have I ever wanted to sell all of my dolls and start over. Um, I just started being able to collect BJD at all, so no. Um, definitely not. Um, the closest answer I have to that is that I do have quite a bit of thrift store doll bodies still laying around, but I'm sure I'll come up with projects for them eventually because it's me. Of course I'm going to use them for something. Um, I have thought about making like some like portraits with them, maybe like cutting up different hands and like attaching them to a canvas because I think that'd be creepy and freak a lot of people out. Um, so I'll, I'm sure I'll find a use for them eventually. Uh, but for now, um, the answer to that is no. Never have I ever obsessed about a doll. I obsessed about all of my dolls pretty much. Um, especially Michaela from afar. I just would look at pictures of her and just be like, I'm never going to have her one day. And here she is, and she's perfect. I almost didn't. If she had sold that, if I had decided to not get her and wait until after work when I got paid and she sold, maybe I wouldn't have gotten her because I wanted her in tan so badly. With all my dolls, it was like right time, right place kind of a thing. Never have I ever had a relationship end because of dolls. Um, no. Nope. Um, again, anyone who knows me knows that I'm, uh, obsessed with these guys. I just, I freely talk about them. I, uh, am pretty open about it. I, ju I just, um, no. All right, so that was the end of part one, and there were two parts, and she just, Nerdy Doll Girl just recently put out part two, and so I decided I'm just gonna do part one and two together. So this is gonna be part two of the video, and I'm sure I'll edit this down somehow, but it's still gonna be a long video, because... Again, I need something to cheer me up. So we're just going to move right on into part two. Part two. Never have I ever regretted a doll purchase. So, um, quite nearly did. Not really, but quite nearly I did with Hujo Body. Because for quite a while, after I'd gotten Miro Doll Body, and I had decided that Dana Head was going to go to Miro Doll Body, this body was left sitting for four months um, while I waited for her head to get cast, uh, Dolls on Noel, which is technically a boy head, but her character is female. Anyway, so that was the head that I liked, so that's the head that I bought. And, um, in that time, because I had to find the head, and I had found the head, and I'd bought the head, and that's when I decided that Dana Head was going to Miro Doll Body. But still, I had to wait four months for the head to be cast, which is actually very, very quick for Doll Zone. I was fully prepared to wait like a full like six to eight months because I know the wait for Doll Zone is long. It is like a long wait, but um, it was like three and a half months uh, when I got her head and I was shocked. But in the meantime, just looking at this body, just there with clothes on, but still just, it's just a hook. It's just a hook with, with nothing to attach it to. And it's just kind of depressing when you have a lone body and you have this weird S hook just sitting there just all by itself. And it made me, it kind of bummed me out. And it made me kind of like be like, ooh, maybe I made a mistake on that one. Maybe I should have just gone with like a Dana head and just skipped the body. And I was kind of starting to regret making that purchase. And then her head came in and now she's perfect. And I love everything. 
about her. I really do. Um, it's, it's amazing the like 180 I did and I can't wait to do her makeup when it stops snowing. We have like eight inches outside right now. I'm not even kidding. But yeah, this, this head really just like, it was almost like someone flicked a light switch on. It was like that immediate. Okay. Never have I ever reinvented a doll. Well, uh, I reinvent my characters all the time. So, uh, I feel like the biggest culprit for this one is Rhapsody, um, who I am in the process of reinventing right now. Yeah, who, not only, uh, is this her new face, but also I have her, uh, body that I'm re-re-sculpting. Though I guess she is my doll, so I don't know if you count her because it's resin doll, whatever. But, um, she's not resin, she's made of milliput and epoxy putty. Anyway, um, I am reinventing her right now as we speak. And uh, I was actually just working on her earlier. I was working on her chest piece a little more earlier. I gotta work on her limbs still. Her torso is pretty much done. Um, I gotta work on her new limbs because I'm thinking I'm just gonna re-sculpt her hands and her feet and her arms and her legs. Well, not her legs. No, her legs are good. Her legs are actually almost done. Uh, but I'm just working on re-sculpting her arms and feet right now. But yeah, I'm, I'm reinventing her along with her younger siblings, so... And uh, besides that, I reinvent characters all the time. Colette is actually a perfect example because she was actually a bit of an older character of mine that I completely reinvented in doll form and looks totally different from my original uh, plans of her. Her character it was very similar to the previous character I had. So Colette is a reinvented character. So I'm reinventing things constantly, which is actually kind of what I like about having physical dolls, is that it's harder for me to completely scrap a project because there are real world limitations like money <laughs> and time. Um, whereas I would find that previously whenever I went to draw a character, every time I went to draw them, I would draw them differently and I would constantly reinvent their story all the time. And uh, when you have a physical doll, it's harder for me to be like, well, uh, let me just scrap everything, <laughs> you know, and move on. And maybe I will do that, but I really hope I don't do that. Never have I ever regretted selling a doll, clothes, or wig, or whatever. Um, I haven't sold anything. I, I don't plan on selling anything. I don't, I don't sell things. Um, I was kind of raised that uh, you use something. When you have something, you use it, and you don't give it up lightly. So that, I'm not saying that I won't sell anything someday, but as of current, uh, I haven't sold anything and I don't have plans to sell anything. Never have I ever slept with any of my dolls, so never have I ever, like, cuddled up in bed with my dolls. Uh, no. I do sit with my dolls. Like I said earlier, I'll just sit and, like, watch Nerdy Doll Girl videos or, um, you know, any kind of videos on YouTube that I watch. And uh, I'll just sit there with them and, um hang out with them and I'll shop for them too. A lot of times uh, if I'm shopping for a particular item for a doll, I will sit with that doll in my lap while I look for items. But uh, like sleeping with them, like going to bed, taking them to bed, I'm always paranoid that I'm gonna like roll over them and like break them or like throw them off the bed somehow. So um, they do all stay in my room. So that's really nice, but uh, I, and I do sit with them, but no, I, I don't, I don't wanna use them as teddy bears. I'm too afraid that I'm going to break them. Um, I tend to just use this pillow. <laughs> I have I have this squishy pillow that is in the background of like all my pictures because I'm constantly like it's constantly in my lap uh, because I like having a surface to put things on and I like having a barrier between me and my cats so that way my cats can need this and not my legs. Never have I ever hit a doll that I just bought. No, again, I just I'm pretty forth I'm pretty straightforward as a person and I'm pretty forthcoming and I'll just be like, "Oh yeah, by the way, I just spent, you know, $300 and I bought this and yes, I'm sure I want her." With all the purchases that I do, I'll just be like, um, "Hey, I just spent this. Hey, I just spent that." To whoever will listen, uh, I don't I I don't hide that. <laughs> Maybe I should. I don't know. Uh, my brother actually, my uh, little brother who just handed me the beer, um who I should, which I should drink more of. Oh, what a good idea. Make sure I don't get it on my Kayla. On my precious little Riley girl. But uh, my brother actually teases me because uh, whenever he wants to like buy a bunch of candy or soda or whatever, and I'm like, you sure you want to do that? He's like, you spent $300 on a doll. Don't tell me. <laughs> don't tell me what to spend my money on, okay? And I'm like, well, that that's fair. That's fair. <laughs>
hard to lecture when uh, you're in that kind of a position. Um, never have I ever entered a doll competition with like photos or wigs or whatever. And the answer to that is again, just no, I just, I haven't done that again. I'm kind of a hermit. I don't like to socialize with people. I'm very introverted. I like being sealed off in my own little world, free of distraction. Thank you very much. What voice was that? Anyway. Never have I ever bought a doll that I said I would never buy. Um, well, that's all of my dolls. Because for the longest time, I just did not have the financial security to invest that kind of money into some plasticky bits. But, uh, thankfully... Uh, things have gotten much better for me in my real life human woman life. So, um, that was all of my dolls, uh, that I said that I would just, I didn't think I would ever be able to get them. Uh, especially because I've been lurking BJD for quite a number of years. And I remember when the secondhand market was like, oh no, you don't get that doll for cheaper secondhand. You pay more money for that doll secondhand. And I mean, some of them are still that way. It depends on how limited the sculpt was. It depends on, on the company, if the company's still in production, how old the limited is. I know all that stuff. I'm thankful. I know that a lot of sellers have been complaining lately about how the market's been really bad. As a buyer, though, on a completely selfish level, um, it's been really good for me because I've been able to get some of these dolls that I've been looking for literally for years Never have I ever taken my dolls out in public. Um, technically Rhapsody I have in her previous incarnation. Of course, again, I'm working on her right now. She is work in progress. But in her previous incarnation, um, her she had a much rougher body. She had a much more basic sort of tubey build with a square midsection. But um, I had a friend that was very interested in her. She was like, I really would like to see her in real life. And so I was like, Okay, and so I brought her out to a friend's house. Um, it was like a party thing, too. So, like, more than just one friend saw her. Quite a few people saw her. And, um, yeah, no, I, I just showed her off because I was just so proud of her. And, like, I know there were so many mistakes with her original sculpting, which is what I'm fixing now. But at the time, I like, I knew, I know the mistakes were there, but I was so impressed with myself for sculpting her in the first place because she was such a big project, and it took me such a long time to get all those pieces and to get all the clay, the little, like, bits of billiput that I had to buy slowly over time and everything. It, it was such a big accomplishment for me that, uh, nope, I gladly took her out in public and showed her off to a bunch of people. Um, and now she's going to be completely different, but that's okay. She's she's just getting upgraded as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and uh, yeah, so no, I have. Now, have I brought anyone else in public? No. I'm not opposed to that either because there are some sort of lovely parks around here that I would not mind bringing my dolls to. The thing is, is I'm worried about going by myself because I wouldn't want anyone to sort of bother me or try to like touch me or my doll somehow. So um, I would have to bring a friend to make sh to like to like play security guard because I would be so paranoid about someone like touching them and like ruining them somehow or them breaking that too. I've heard the horror stories. I have been lurking for a while. I have heard the horror stories. Never have I ever given my doll a mod. Well, uh, I have quite a few original sculpts under my belt. And uh, besides that, I am also currently modding this Miro doll body. Yes, I have modded. <laughs> yes, I have done modding. <laughs> and, uh, and Dana Head. So yes, I have done modding. Very rough right now. Um, I'm sure their projects will be complete eventually. But um, I'm not worried about it because, again, I have quite a few original sculpts under my belt. I have Rhapsody, Melody, Cacophony, Symphony, Rue, and Marilyn. Marilyn has a video and Rue has a video. Rhapsody, Melody, Symphony, Cacophony currently don't have videos because I sculpted them before I made my YouTube channel. When their re-sculpts are done, I will put out videos for them. That's my plan. Um, and Rue will get an update video and Marilyn's still perfect. Actually, you know what? I haven't shown Marilyn. But this is Marilyn for anyone new to the channel. I have actually gotten quite a few more subscribers since her video went out. But her video is up on the channel. So just a little uh, visit from her right there. So I guess she's not really BJD though. She's more just um, a little... She, she can do this and she can do this. And that's about it. Um, I modeled her off of like little brats. I wanted a fantasy little brat. So that's what she is. Moving on. Never have I ever spent more money on my doll's wardrobe than my own. Rue's hoodie was expensive. Here, let me get him. Rue, who I keep talking about. 
Um, originally, I made his clothes, but I decided that he needed a little bit of an upgrade while I was upgrading everyone else. I thought it would be fair. I was buying a lot of clothes for uh, all my resin ones. So this Dalmore hoodie was the last one that they had up, and it was like $30. And I bought it. So they're really spoiled. These pants were expensive, too, if I remember correctly. I put the prices up. And his necklace, because I bought him the little robot necklace, because him and Rhapsody are um, a couple. So Rhapsody is like an, an advanced like android robot lady. And so she has a skeleton necklace when her outfit gets back together. If you watch older videos of mine, she has a skeleton necklace and then Rue has a robot necklace. So um, they're all pretty spoiled when it comes to clothes. I don't, I, I'm pretty sure I spent more money on this hoodie than I have of an actual hoodie for me. So, uh, yeah, I have done that. Yeah. Right. And if I haven't made it clear, um, Rue is also currently work in progress. Um, I haven't redone his body yet. I don't know if I'm going to. His face has to be, uh, sealed and repainted still. But again, it's blizzarding outside right now. So I can't do that until the blizzard goes away and it gets warm enough for me to seal his face and then paint his face and all that stuff. Never have I ever wished I could trade clothes with my dolls. Um, literally all the outfits that I've bought for my dolls, I wish I had. Rue's outfit, I think, looks so comfortable. Like, I would love to wear this. Like, literally all their outfits. Uh, Mia's outfit today, because it was blizzarding outside. That's why I took her off the shelf, because I was like, you know, I just want to be dressed all warm and comfortable like this, with a wonderful warm hat and a nice cuddly hoodie and, like, um, her leggings, her Dalmore leggings that say scream and shout on them. Um, I love her whole outfit and I wish I like genuinely want this outfit. This is like one of those things though where I would have to spend like $30 on like an Adidas hoodie and I'm like, but that's too much money. I can get the one that's on sale for 15. That's me. Never have I ever lived vicariously through my dolls. Uh, I think all of my dolls are bit different bits and pieces of me and uh, my storyline does have them go on quite a few adventures that I don't think would be possible for me to go uh, in real life. And uh, like with Byron and eventually Josephine too, I think both of these characters are actually characters that I don't think I would get along with these people in real life, but I still think that they're interesting. Oh, all oh, my battery's dying. Oh, I gotta charge that. Ooh. Anyway, we're gonna continue. My face is really red from the alcohol. Good. Okay, uh, where was I at? So yeah, I don't think um, I would really get along with some of my characters if they were real life people and I met them in real life. I don't have to worry about them hating me. Like Josephine's character, you can't tell right now because she's really rough and work in progress. But I, I want her to be like the everyday girl. I want her to be like just a normal person who likes to hang out with people, which I don't like to do, who likes to follow trendy things, which I don't like to do, who just likes pop culture, which I don't like. And she's really meant to be that kind of character because she's so opposite to what I am that I know that if I met that person in real life, I would never, we would have nothing in common. But it's great to have that in character form because then I can still interact with that kind of a person and be like, I don't hate you, but I have some criticisms of you. And then you can uh, implement that into an overall narrative context that uh, is my dream and my overall goal. Never have I ever had a crush on a doll, either one you own or wish you owned. Um, <laughs> um, I'm very like personality driven as a person. How someone looks is very, very like secondary to me. And um, I guess I like Rue, uh, if we wanna get really weird and Pygmalion-y up in here. I do really like how I sculpted Rue. Like the number one thing that I look for in a person is can you make me laugh? And odds are a resin doll can't really make you laugh. They can make you laugh like once or twice, but um, consistently on a daily basis, it'd be pretty hard in my experience anyway, to find a doll that can make me laugh like hysterically on a daily basis. And that really is like the most important characteristic to me. So um, not really closest one, I guess is Rue, but um, even then I don't really think he's that funny of a person. So I don't even know if that would even work, honestly. So, uh, no, basically, no. I, I don't think I've ever had a crush on any of my dolls. I mean, I've, like, sculpted dolls. I don't think that really counts. Does that count? I've sculpted them. 
Like, I think they're pretty because I made them. Never have ever had to lie about how much a doll cost or was worth. Again, I'm very forthcoming about what I spend on my hobby and um, to the point where uh, maybe I shouldn't share as much as I do because I get really excited when I find a doll that I've been looking at or that I want and what I've gotten and, and, and all that stuff. So no, no, I've never had to lie about, I've never had to lie about the cost of them. Never have I ever overpaid for a doll. I got all my dolls second hand. So I don't, I don't think so. Um, the closest maybe is uh, maybe Resin Soul Ya. Yeah, maybe I could have haggled and got her a little cheaper because she does retail around like 140 um, ish on Bobobi on like from their website. But here's the thing. The reason why I got her, A, she was the right sculpt. B, she was the right color, tan, which is was very important to me. I wanted a tan. And C, she isn't available on Junkie Spot last I checked. Uh, right, right mold, right color, and currently only available second hand or directly from the company, which is going to be like a six month wait. Maybe I don't know how I don't know how uh, Bobobi slash Resin Soul shipping is. So I don't feel like I did because it was like again it was like one thirty, and then with shipping she was like one forty. Um, so maybe I could have haggled that down. Maybe to other people I overpaid to that. I don't feel like I have. Never have I ever got into a fight on social media about a doll or doll company. No. Um, again I'm very like hands off. And I don't really like to talk to people and I don't really like to and I found that um, sometimes when I give advice to people because uh, I, I did that briefly uh, where I would post comments answering people's questions about stuff and then I had one person like then bombard me with like question after question after question and it was like um, entire like small novella worth of questions about what to do with stuff with their doll and um i backed off and uh, now i don't do that anymore so i don't really like to talk to people that much like i said before and uh no and sometimes i will like lurk discussments um online but i don't participate in them never have i ever put my dolls in a less than safe pose or in something unsafe like water for an amazing photo uh, all my pictures are pretty crappy. I have taken pictures outside of uh, both Rue and Rhapsody. Um, I have taken pictures of him outside pre-re-sculpting, uh, but I don't think standing him up in some fall leaves by a tree is really like dangerous posing, um, and it was just in my yard. So uh, that's about as adventurous as I've gotten with these guys, so no. Sorry guys, real quick, um, I was editing my video and I realized that I had totally missed the last question of part two. I'm really smart if you can't tell. But besides that, um, the question was, um, have you ever reshelled a doll because you found the perfect sculpt? And uh, the good news is the answer is short, it's just no. So uh, back to the previous video. Uh, I guess that's it. Okay. And uh, that's all the questions. So I guess that's going to do it for me. Again, I will leave the original video links in the description. So go check out the maker of the tag, Nerdy Doll Girl. I have been watching quite a few of her videos lately. While sculpting. I like to watch doll videos while I'm sculpting or just YouTube in general. It's like not specifically doll videos, but um, I did have watched quite a few of her videos while sculpting. So I thought this would be a fun tag. This tag kind of blew up all over the place, uh, like low key, um, because the doll hobby is pretty niche. So, um, but a lot of people have done it and I thought, why not, while I'm trapped inside these four walls dying of cabin fever, to have some fun for once and do a tag video. <laughs> having a bit of selfish time. And as a reward to anyone who's watched to the end of this video, uh, when it comes to the beauty of the extra Dalmore shirt, um, how did I solve this dilemma of having an extra shirt laying around as I bought another doll? So uh, look forward to that because I'm sure I'll have that video up eventually as well. So um, if you want to see more from me, you can like, subscribe, talk to you guys later. Bye.